is going on? DJ Nation, Kenny Kim here, bringing you another Fantasy Golf Generous podcast this week for the Phil Collins Open. As usual, I am here with Tyler Tambley. Tyler, what is up, my friend? What is up, Kenny? We're back. Another big week in the books, and I'm excited. This is another good one. We talked about it a couple weeks ago, the stretch that we're going on here now. Honda next week, so we'll get through this one first. But just a reminder, you know, obviously we, we get excited for that one too, and we'll talk a little bit about it on the show. Before we get into it, I want to remind everyone very quickly, podcast and show is brought to you and presented by DraftKings. We'll definitely have an offer for you guys later on on DraftKings. It's in regards to the hoops, a little basketball offer for you guys. So we'll do that before we get into the DFS tiers. And then also our friends over at Fantasy National, fantasynational.com slash FGD. Get yourself 20% off your first subscription. Kenny, another good one in the books. What did you think? This, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit sad because this is the first time, the so last year of COVID, uh, with COVID, everything, of course, I couldn't go down. But the previous three years, I've been there every Saturday cheering for that hole-in-one. So many close calls. That's not the story. Scheffler got the win finally. But th- the story for me was I missed the hole-in-one. Two of them, actually. And people just went absolutely nuts. It was an incredible thing to see. Yeah, I was that was fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Both, both. I mean, it took like three thousand strokes before yeah. in between Molinari's hole in one and um, a Ryder's hole in one there, and then what thirty three strokes. Yeah, uh, for the next one where Ortiz hit one, uh, it was pretty incredible stuff. All that beer flying, it was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it definitely gave the gave the tournament a lot more juice uh, than it already has, and it's one of the juiciest tournaments there is. You know, uh, you know th- this stretch. I mean, can you know? Like, can you feel it in the air tonight? You know what I'm saying? Like starting from last week oh, for the next month and a half, it's the big tournament, the big tournament, the big tournament, the big tournament. And so, so we're ready. We're in this grind overall. It was a great event. You saw Scheffler finally get his win three in a row. First timers going from list to hoagie to chef dog. Um, didn't have him. It didn't bet him, which I was angry about, but I mean, you know, I rarely bet on guys who've never won before. It's just something I don't do that often but i did have him in my cash game cornerstones which was nice um you know he came through i i Thigala. uh that guy is a baller we'll talk uh, about really him, that guy. really 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 strong i mean he went for it on 17 he wasn't no pussy uh that's for damn sure uh you know he went for it maybe a little ill-gotten uh you know probably not the best play he could have done because i mean what he, he birdies that hole and he's coming in pars to win right i mean it's on on, on 18 uh so it did hurt but you know you sort of like the aggressiveness when it comes down to you know he's still a younger guy 24 25 um maybe he can learn from that and keep on going he was definitely emotional at the end and scotty of course uh finally gets that monkey off his back we'll see if this leads to more you know uh more victories i mean you saw hoagie last week i mean uh, hoagie at the Phoenix open coming off of his win you know, he's got his, he's got his card. He's got nothing to worry about. I went out there, free balled it, uh, and, and, you know, had a, had a chance uh, on Sunday. Uh, so, yeah, it was really good to watch. It was, it was a fun tournament. Xander was up there. Leaderboard was stacked. John Rahm, dead last in putting out there, still finishing top tens. Uh, uh, JT doing this thing where, you know, he's not in contention the first couple of days and just Saturday and Sunday just shoots up that leaderboard again for another top 10. Uh, so it's a pretty nice leaderboard. Uh, personally, for me, it was a good week. Cash one, only four of six. I had Han and Hovland, both my cash game cornerstones, missed the cut. Uh, but, you know, I had the winner and I had Xander who finished third, I think. Uh, and I had Horschel who tied for third as well and Hadwin. Um, so, I mean, that, that whole thing was trying to find the three studs uh, up top to give you a chance of those high finishes to give you the points you needed. Because I think it was 40% had, um, over 40% had five or six or more mm-hmm. uh, in their cash lineup. And I had four or six, and I finished in you know the top twenty percent uh, uh, in all double ups. Uh, so I mean, so it, that whole strategy of picking studs, do you think you can win with one punt play? It ended up working out. Maybe not the exact way I wanted to. I'd rather have Hovland make the cut, and maybe Hadwin or Horace will miss the cut because you know they weren't part of my cash game cornerstones. Uh, but you know, it still worked out. And, you know, I, I, when it came down to it, I had you know four guys that I thought they could win, and Hadwin probably had a really good chance too. Except he sort of fell uh, on Sunday. This week, my cash lineup, I think I have five guys that can win. Uh, so so it should be nice. Uh, we're getting down to this nitty gritty. It's going to be fun. What's the event? Yeah, I think you have three guys in your cash game lineup that can win. But we'll talk about that as we get through the show. But I do like it this week. You gave me a little preview before. So I love the event. You talked about the gal there, man. A little bit of emotion shown for sure. But like you said, so young. I just said it was just dripping in swagger out there. When, he was, when he's rolling, it's fun to watch him. And then on top of it, it was like, if you watched, you know, the, the last couple of days, Saturday and Sunday, he made some big mistakes 
and he was still right there. He battled mm-hmm. back from them. He still stayed in the mix. He did his thing. I I believe it was uh, actually I don't want to say because I forget which commentator it was, but they said you know the the one of the instructors he has could just compare him to one guy, talent level, all around game. Seems crazy to say it, but and it's only early and he's young. But they said John Rom is the only guy that they could describe him with as far as what he can bring to the table with pure talent and athleticism across all angles of the golf game. So I think that's something to keep in mind. The talent level is incredible. And then, like you mentioned, it was, you know, Cantlay, three guys. So Cantlay, Rom, JT, actually four, X, all those guys. Like, I don't know how at least one of them didn't win this thing by three or four. Even Scotty at the end tried to give it back to Cantlay, missing that short putt. That's my first wrong call of the original season preview pod where I said my hot take of the season would be that Scotty would come close a bunch, but not win any of them. He almost tried to give it away at the end. He did not. I'm happy for him. I like the guy. He's a good player. I just thought that would be a situation. I'm going to stick with it this week. When I, I'll move it on now to Willie Z because he's going to be popular when we talk about this week. The interesting thing, though, like you said for last week, as far as like we talked strategy for days on here on roster construction, Scotty could be like your third guy into the lineup. The price was just silly at 9100 I'm saying that because I was also disappointed. I chose to bet Sam Burns at a pretty similar number. Like I could have bet both. I could have bet either. I could have done whatever, but I went with Burns and ended up being Scotty that got the job done. So good for him. Good for the event. I don't know what else. I mean, it was nice to see, I guess that's kind of the thing you mentioned, but just all these events we're getting into now are some of the best, you know, that you'll get all season. And now we're getting the stronger fields. The last point would just be the ROM factor. You mentioned it. I know I mentioned three other guys up there with them, but ROM, that consistent game and just not do it. Like he did nothing, man. It might've been worse. I think you said it on Twitter. You might've said his D game this time. We joke all the time about his B minus or his C that had to be his worst that we've seen in a long time and still top 10 in this well, it tournament. Was, it was mostly his putter. I guess some, some people corrected me on Twitter uh, because I mean, ball striking wise, I think he was first in the field. So, so it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. Uh, he just had literally one of his worst putting rounds ever. Uh, but I mean, if you look at the guys up top who were, they were pretty incredible stuff. I mean, like, I think it was Rom led in ball striking. He had some crazy amount uh, of, of ball striking numbers. Uh, JT had like one of his best approach days ever, uh, you know, and like uh, uh, it was pretty impressive stuff from the top guys. And I think we're going to see the same thing again. Try and squeeze as many of those guys up top as possible if you want in your in your lineups if you can. Yeah, he was really he was really good. Third tee to green overall in the week. I didn't check that, but I did see. Uh, you know, just from the eye test, I'm going to talk about Xander later when we get to the tiers, a little bit of the eye test, but going through Rom stuff, like Saturday lost on approach, Sunday lost, it just wasn't, so, you know, it just didn't seem like Rom. And I guess that's what it comes down to. You're just used to seeing those putts drop and really maybe that's what stood out to me. But yeah, it's just crazy to see the level of consistency from these guys. JT, like you mentioned, just finding the weekend and finding a way to get his way up there. But Xander, I'll talk quick on it now because, we'll, you know, we'll get to that later, but man. He just missed on Saturday, I think, four putts that were within five feet. Sunday, almost the same thing. I I really thought he was just going to win it. Brooks did sort of the same thing. We didn't talk about him. But overall, exciting event. I was sad to not be there. I can promise you this, Kenny. I will be there next year because it's back there for the Super Bowl again. Double down on the weekend. Got to try and get back into a suite on Saturday and then go to the bowl on Sunday. That'd be the way to do it. So we'll see how things shake out. But definitely we'll be going down to Phoenix next year for this event. It's always a good one. Yeah, I put it in Pat's ear since he's talking about using the DraftKings suite on 16 to record the shows next year. Cool. I'm like, you know, I'll come. <laughs> I'll come. We should record our shows there too. Uh, I think but, you're uh, right. yeah. we'll have yeah, to twist yeah. his arm a little yeah. bit. I mean, I'll pay for airfare. Just give me in the suite. That's all I care about. I don't want to make that mad dash. I'm 42 years old. I walked up like six flights of stairs the other day. And, <laughs> and then the next day, like I couldn't walk. So that tells you how in shape I am right now. I got a doctor's appointment on Thursday and I'm going to get all my labs done. And that's not going to be good. So if you don't hear from me from like after Thursday, I probably died. Uh, so that's probably what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, one more thing about, uh, I don't know, let's just go on. Let's just go on. Anyway, so today we're recording the pod. It is what, what, what is it? Valentine's Day, correct? Campbell, what are you doing for your wife today? I know you, I know you have to have one of the, the best wives. What are you doing? What are you doing? I do. Yeah, we got, I got a great wife and we are going to be eating. Uh, we got a little tradition, a little Chinese food, get the action going there. We're going to have that, you know, get the kids down, go to bed and then have a night. So it should be a good one. Yeah. Chinese food is good because you don't get too full. So later on you can still, you know, with correct. ease, you know what I'm saying? So that, that works out pretty well. Uh, you know, as you guys know, I'm a single guy. Uh, so, you know, some, some dating advice with Kenny Kim right here. Uh, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're single and you're looking to get with a girl, 
the week after Valentine's Day is your time to strike, especially if you know that the girl, you know, did not have a Valentine's Day. You know, it, it sounds awful. This is like bad thinking. But, you know, the way I think about it is, you know, when it comes to Valentine's Day, if a guy doesn't have a day, big deal. If a girl doesn't, they sort of take it a little harder than most guys would, right? Uh, so, you know, it's time to pounce uh, at that point in time. So if you want to get into a girl's DMs, this is the week. Uh, so, so basically, I have, I've been eyeing this girl. Uh, she's been in a, uh, she's in a, uh, uh, a drinking, a, Nor- a Northern Virginia drinking Facebook group that I follow where, you know, you post like, you know, drinks that you go out, bars that you go out. And so and she's very active. So already we have something in common. Um, so I was thinking about, I've been thinking about DMing her for a while now, but I was like, yeah, it's almost Valentine's Day. Let, let me wait until after Valentine's Day to go ahead and do this because it's the perfect time. Uh, also, you know, when you do slide into a girl's DMs and she seems sort of receptive, make sure that when you tell, when you, when you meet up, that you meet up at a place she's comfortable with. So, so that's, that's advice number one, you know, have her pick a place uh, because, you know, where she will be comfortable, place she goes off and where she knows people because you're just meeting some, you know, I'm just some random dude she's never even heard of in her life. Uh, so, so just some simple advice there. It, it is the best time of year uh, to go, to go and try and pounce um, on that pussy. All right. So I know that sounds awful, right? That sounds horrible, uh, but you got to realize I am at a disadvantage. You know, I'm 42 years old. I'm fat. I am not rich. I, mean, I make money, but I'm not rich. So I am low on the playing field. I, I have to, you got to find every edge you can when you're like me, just like an EFS. Got to find that edge. And if that edge is desperation from the other sex, you just go ahead and take that shit. You go ahead and take that. All right. So let's move on to uh, the uh, listener league for this week. The Listener League winner. Hey, we got a story about the Listener League winner. His name is, uh, what was it? Pop Pop? Pop Pop, Pop 958. Yeah, go ahead. Tell. Yeah, big, big fan. Oh. Of the it's, it's actually I crazy. I got a DM today. His son reached out to me and said, big fans. His dad's not as tech, sa- as tech savvy. He said he was a little bit disgraced that his dad had beat, had won the tournament before him. He's a, you know, his son is a winner of the Mayo Listener League, which is huge. He won a big 20K prize there. So shout out to him. But he wrote me back and just said, yeah, I might have to help him get into the three man this week. But he loves the fact that Kenny Kim smokes, chain smokes, he drinks, loved the stories, said he got, he first got onto the pod when we were going down to Florida, which the Honda is next week. That's where we went down to. And we told the strip club story and a couple other ones that went in there said he hasn't stopped listening ever since. So pop pop nine, five, eight, shout out to you. Appreciate the support. Congrats on the win. Uh, we were saying before the show, you, you, Edged out second place by five points, but then it was quite the blowout thereafter, almost 30 to 35 over the third place and beyond. So congrats to you. We will get that link out to the email that your son provided so that you can join us in the three man. We got do we got uh, stood up. Speaking of Valentine's Day and advice and back and forth and situations, we got stood up in the three man last week, Kenny. So there was no two man. That sucked. But uh, yeah, we'll be back in the three man this week. We will get that link out for pop pop nine, nine, five, eight. I'm okay with that because my 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 three man lineup went six for six, but didn't even finish in the top fifty percent in the listener league. So well, you, would, you would have won the three man though. Then that's the case. Like why? I don't know. I only had six. I didn't. I had four or six. I only five had four, six. I only had four hundred seven points. Okay. Yeah. Like I, I I had like I had like one golfer inside forty third place. Yeah. Okay. What what so, about yeah. this lineup? So. Pop pop, All right, nine, so this five, right, pop, pop, nine, pop, pop, nine, nine, five, eight had Hideki to start at 22% owned. Of course he finished in eighth. He had the winner, Mr. Scotty Scheffler, 26% owned. Matthew Fitzpatrick, who's been sneaky good here lately. I like him this week. 8% owned, uh, 96 points. Billy Horschel, who was in my cash game lineup. We talked about him last week. 11% owned, finished in sixth. Uh, Ortiz with the hole in one and Eagle back to back. That was probably helpful. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> Ah, my bad. Ah, all right. So Carlos Ortiz uh, finished in 33rd, but had 81 points. And Party Marty Laird finished in what? 14th with 83 points. What'd you think in the lineup? Yeah, I liked it. I think uh, you mentioned the little Fitzpatrick keys, uh, piece there, key to the lineup. I think that was good. Horschel still around just 10%, had himself a pretty good week, got better as it went on. 66 to round it out, had the all four under 70, which was rare a little bit. So I think, you know, with that, set up the key for me was just what he avoided down at the bottom wise was very popular you know Mito was getting some ownership but not quite as much as wise so by avoiding the 
$7,100 chalk. He ended up going to Laird, who was, you know, a great course. That was one thing too, just talking about it, not to take away from this lineup, but Laird made me think of it. All the guys that had the best course history did pretty well, right? You look at Decky, you look at, and Decky got ownership, but let's use other ones. So Bubba, um, Brooks, Laird, Hadwin, all these types of guys and went out and had great weeks. And we talked about all week, like how the course history was huge at that course, literally third on tour after Augusta national golf club and Wiley country club where the Sony open is played. So I just thought that was kind of funny to see that everyone just goes to the automatic, like trendy or what have you done for me lately plays and sort of avoided the strategy that has worked all along. And those guys all ended up doing well and crushing Scheffler as chalk, like I said, was no surprise, but you kind of had to have them. And, I didn't mind him at 9,100 regardless of ownership just because he could be your third guy in. So in this case, Pop Pop used him as a second. Definitely love the lineup. And again, shout out to Pop Pop. Appreciate the support. We'll see in the three-man this week. Yeah, I mean, a good segue when you talk about Augusta to this week. Uh, this week, we know we're the Genesis uh, Invitational uh, from Riviera. You know, one of the big correlations of this course is with Augusta. 19 or 18 of the last 31 winners here have finished first or second at Augusta at some point in their careers. So there, there, there is sort of a master's type of vibe uh, when it comes to this. Um, you know, so that's something to think about when you make your lineups this week. And of course it is an invitational. So I think it's only like 120, 123 golfers. So that changes uh, a little bit because there's only going to be about, you know, it's less than half the field will be cut. Uh, so you have to be a, a tiny bit more aggressive when you come down to everything, uh, especially when it comes to cash. Uh, now, Riviera Country Club, 7,300, uh, 7,350 7, yard par 71, four par threes, three par fives. The three par fives are the three easiest holes on the course. There's also drivable par four. No, it is one of the best and most challenging courses on tour. Uh, off the tee golfers are going to see tight fairways, many fairway bunkers, and challenging dog legs, especially to the right, which should flavor right handed golfers who would have fade or lefties who would have draw. Uh, the course hasn't seen much, you know, when it comes to rain, I, you know, when it comes to the weather, I haven't checked it. It's something we do have to check because it will make the course play a little bit different, especially if, the, if there's winds and, and how soft it is. I know we saw last week in Phoenix how dry it's been, and that made the course play a little bit more difficult than it normally has, which was a fun watch. Uh, you know, the, the balls weren't sticking on the ground. I, I'm, I'm not sure about the weather report. Uh, it's something we're going to have to check uh, as the week goes on, see how much rain they have. Uh, you know, but the drier it is, the more difficult the course is going to be. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, so, you know, th there are trees, but the tree line is usually far away from the fairway. So golfers will have to miss wildly to have trees blocking their approach shots. Uh, the fairways are rough use Kikuyu grass. The grass is, you know, rare in the United States. Uh, it's possible it could cause problems. And many of these guys have been playing Kikuyu long enough where they know what they're doing. Um, it's very popular on golf, which is, uh, in golf courses in South Africa, Australia, and Asian countries. Something to look at possibly when it comes to DraftKings. Uh, the rough is only about two inches tall, but you know that Kikuyu can get a little bit bratty. Uh, so you know, there are going to be instances where you, you know, you're not going to know whether it's going to be a flyer or not. The distances are going to be challenging from that Kikuyu rough. Uh, now, hitting short irons in the Kuya Rough, it'll make the course a little bit easier. So, the longer guys definitely have a little bit of an edge uh, this week on this course. Now, uh, on the golf, on the flip side, you know, if golfers hit the fairway, the Kuya Fairway, uh, the ball sits up perfectly. Really, really nice, almost teed up. Uh, so, it's definitely going to be an advantage to hit it into the fairway, just like every week, usually. Uh, but the length is definitely going to help because there are going to be a lot of missed fairways no matter what, especially if it's dry and the ball keeps rolling because, you know, dry conditions lead to thinner fairways. Uh, approach play is definitely an important stat here. Uh, as nearly 70% of golfers that have finished top three here in the last six, seven years have been inside the top 60 in strokes gain approach for the year they finished top three. Uh, the greens use POA uh, and bent grass. They're going to be above average in square footage. Uh, but the landing areas or birdie attempts will be small uh, due to normally fast, firm, undulating, and multi-tiered aspects of the green. Uh, the greens will be quick, statement rating around 12, 12 and a half. Uh, they'll be surrounded by bunkers and false fronts. The sixth hole, of course, has that bunker right in the middle of the green. Uh, it should always make some good entertainment. Um, one key number I saw was that nearly 80% of golfers that finished top three here in the last 15, 16 years were inside the top 55 in strokes game tee to green the year they finished top three. So it's definitely a big boy course. Tambo, what are you looking for? Yeah, a lot of what you just said is exactly what I'm going after. You know, like you said, fairways. I got to have good around the green game, be strong there. It's, you know, some of the course history here matters more than most too. If you go back and look, just the same guys, when we get into this upper tier, to me, it's more about 
the strategy. We did enough conversation around that last week. So I'm not going to go heavily into it, but just it's like a major, right? The field is so strong. The top 10 players in the world are all here on top of what you have to sift through below. And it's an invitation, like you said. So I think it's, I think they rounded it out today at 120. I want to say weather wise, you did mention, I want to talk real quick. It sounds like there'll be a little bit of rain leading in, but after that, it should dry out quite a bit. So that's going to just add into it even more. We talked off the top about these guys and their consistency levels. Well, now it's a little bit different when you've got all the same guys we talked about in the exact same tournament. They all can play some pretty good golf over the weekend. I think it'll come a lot. It'll come in a lot more handy when we get down to the bottom tier and guys that you actually want to take flyers on and take shots at down in the 6K range because they loaded the 6K up, 6K range up this week. And spoiler alert, but Ricky Fowler finally sub 7k $6,600 this week. So we'll get to that when we get into it as well. Before we get into the tiers though, Kenny, got to remind everyone of a very special offer from our friends over at DraftKings. Hoops fans, the latest offer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, is just too good to pass up. I'm talking between the legs 360 windmill good. New customers can bet just $1 on any team and get $150 in free bets if they win. It's that simple. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still take your shot at a big payday. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Basketball Contests. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now, use promo code FGD, bet just $1 on any NBA team and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's promo code FGD at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 or older. Minimum age and location requirements vary by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com sportsbook for full list of requirements and state-specific responsible gaming resources. Void where prohibited. Minimum $5 deposit. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Tennessee, call or text the TN red line. That's 1-800-889-9789. In Connecticut, call 888-789-777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In New York, call 877-8-HOPENY or text HOPENY or 467-369. All right, so let's get to these tiers in the 10K range. We got DJ all the way up to Rom. How are you going this week, brother? Yeah, I'm definitely sticking with Rom for sure at the top. If you look at it, just, uh, you know, everything we talked about earlier, I don't have to rehash, but I, I don't care what anyone says. I mean, it's even better that I didn't check those numbers. They ended up coming third tee to green because I was already just thinking from the eye test and what we know about him. We don't have to talk too much. It's John Rom, But just in general, like I said, you look, uh, this this week reminds me, so it's Rom and Cantley at the top are the two I have the most interest out of the five. And it it really does make me think about the memorial where Rom was up five and it's just like the COVID test happens and that's the way it goes. And then Cantley goes on to win. It makes me think exactly of that. And I feel like one of those two is going to win this thing by a touchdown. So I- I'm going with Rom. That's where I lean, uh, you know, the putter for me, I think he's going to find that Cantley was off and on with the irons and he can be off and on with the putter as well. So worries me just a little bit more, but those are the two I have the most love for up top. And then third, if I had to pick a third guy would be Dustin Johnson. Uh, GPPs, large fields, maybe only, maybe not my main lineup, but just looking back to last week and what I talked about there, this course history is not a small sample size. I've got it up eighth, 10th, ninth, 16th, won it, fourth, second, second, miscut fourth, miscut third. The guy's dominant at this course. He just crushes it. He barely tried coming out and dusting the rust off, and he ended up getting eighth place a couple of weeks ago. So I'm in on DJ as well at 10 2 down at the bottom. And I like actually starting some lineups with him and just doing it that way where you fade all the, the Ram can't lay all that. And back finally to the strategy piece is just that what I was going to say earlier, Kenny, because it's going to be the same as always up top here. There's so many guys that people can make a case for the ownership is going to be spread out. And a guy like Rom who maybe should be 30% is going to come in at like 23 again or something like that. So you play who you want, play who you like. These are the guys that I like Rom, then can't lay then DJ. No, they're not in the same section, but who do you like? Who you play DJ or Roy? This week, I've, I've got DJ. You're gonna play DJ over Rory. I'm yeah. thinking of playing Rory over DJ. I think you week. can play both. I'm just saying that's my point. Like you could you could do a crazy lineup where it's not actually crazy and play DJ Rory, where most people will probably have like a Rom Hideki or something, and you've got yourself a, a different lineup construction. You build differently down at the bottom based on where you're starting in salary, and you still end up with two guys in DJ and Rory that can win the thing. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play Patrick Cantley. That's the one guy I know I'm gonna play. 
uh, this week. He's just been playing too well. I mean, how many top sixes, sevens in a row does he have? The guy's just been up there week in, week out uh, in contention every week he's in there. He's sort of like what John Rahm was doing last year and what DJ was doing years before that. It's sort of in that same mold, which is great. It's amazing how many great golfers there are, are right now on tour. Every week, it's like we're talking about somebody new that's up there uh, in the stratosphere of elite golfers. Uh, I think it's kind of like you get number one this week, if I'm not mistaken, number one in the world uh, if he wins. I could be wrong about that. I might have misread it, but I think uh, it's possible. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'm definitely playing Cantley. When it comes to the other ones, I mean, I, I can't really decide. JT model wise looks great but then the two missed cuts last year after really stellar performances at waste management but then a year before that he finished what second or third here too so not what not really i can't really figure out what to make of of jt uh Kyle, you think is going to be the least owned because he has the worst course history i feel like it's price course history dj having great course history as a, you know i just mentioned and then people wanting to just pay up for rom and cantley and like i said if anyone was going to tell themselves a story not about Rahm and Cantlay or DJ. I think it would be JT, just because if you look at last week, T8 had the stat situation as well, where it looked good, but didn't have one piece of the game going. And then you look, he did miss the two cuts, but before that, second, ninth, you know what I mean? So I just feel like Morikawa will come in the lowest owned in this range at that price tag. Just look at these guys. I might go Cantlay and Rahm and then no, no, no one else in the 10K range. Uh, because my first, a, cat- you know, something to be said, not to cut you off, but I do think there's a, something to be said for that strategy where you're playing one of those two and dropping down completely because then you can feel good about taking more guys in that 9K range and mixing it up there because we have, look, the pricing has to be spread out. So we have legit golfers that can win this tournament in the 9K range that could easily flip flop with more account. Like Hovland and Decky have five, what is it, four or five wins between them over the last 10 to 12 events between them. And they're priced down here where some of the guys up top haven't won in forever. They're just so damn consistent and ranked higher in the world rankings, have better Vegas odds. So there's a lot of options you can go with here this week, Kenny. Yeah, I, I think that that's the way I'm going to go at least early lean in the week. We'll see how it goes as the week plays off. Let's go to the nine carries. And I do like a lot of golfers here. That's, that's the issue. I like that strategy going one of these two top guys and going straight to the nine K first cash game cornerstone is going to be Xander. Uh, you know, the guy's been playing. He had that really nice, you, like you said, last week. He should have won, probably. He probably should have won, missing all those short putts uh, out there. And he's normally a pretty decent putter uh, when it comes down to it. Uh, and he's a streaky type guy, too. You see a lot of, like, you know, multiple weeks in the top 10 when he, when he hits that first top 10. Uh, so, you know, I, I like Xander a lot. Uh, and so I'm going to keep going with him at 9,900. And we'll see in a good course history. He's made the cut here, I think, all four or five years. Always top 15, top 20, somewhere around there. Maybe one, maybe this is the year he breaks through. Um, next cash game cornerstone is going to be Hideki. Again, another guy who's in that mold of been playing really, really, really good golf uh, in the last three, four months. Some of the one of the best players in the world. I consider him top five best player in the world. Uh, maybe even top three uh, in player in the world in the last you know three, four months. Uh, and you get him at ninety three hundred dollars. I'm going to go and take that. Uh, he missed a cut last year, but he does have a couple of high finishes here in the past. You know his iron game is strong. You know he's good from one fifty to one seventy five. There's going to be a bunch of those uh, approaches this week. Uh, and then you know when it comes to GPPs, like I said, I'll probably play Rory. What do you think of Hovland? You think he's going to be another guy who's going to be lower owned, or are people going to go back to him after his missed cut? tough to tell because right now you know we play this game every week and people love to talk about flop lag and he burned everyone last week but sometimes that just gets people to hop right back on he does have a complete game it would make sense for him to bounce back here no problem at 9400 if he goes low owned i'll definitely have some interest just because like you said just the fact that how good he is in this range though decky scheffler just won people normally don't it's tough to say because of that i know cam smith is getting a little love and then like you mentioned earlier with xander from last week it looked like he should have won that thing and it could have been by a lot. But the other interesting part is using our friends over at fantasy national. I don't know about your stuff, but when I pull up the numbers, Xander does not really quote unquote pop in the models. So that, you know, we'll see what that leads to, but Xander's one of those guys that typically gets ownership either way. So uh, this range is interesting. I like a few guys in here, but who do you, who do you like overall in this range? I mean, it has cam just been playing overseas. I just don't have very much info from him where he's been playing. I mean, I guess he's played overseas. Yeah, he's play, he played one one event overseas. Uh, well, he won, he played, right? He, he won over top of Rom. We watched that one. And then uh, where did he play after that? Yeah, yeah, and then Sony. And then he had one more fourth-place finish 
two weeks ago, maybe in Australia. Yeah, I'll pull it up. I can't remember yeah. exactly, but he did come fourth. I'd seen that, so I just want to. Yeah, make sure. I mean, I, I like him, but he just you know he hasn't played that much. So we'll see. But I mean, I, I do like. I think I'm going to go back to Hovland again. The worry is his short game, which is not the best. And sometimes if you miss these greens, uh, you're going to have trouble. But again, the soft conditions might help if there, if there is rain. Uh, again, I, Rory's my favorite here in this range. Uh, you know, and, and then you know, Cantley is my favorite up top. When it comes to other plays, we'll have to see how it goes. But, you know, what about you? What are you going to this range? Yeah, I, I like the guys at the bottom. So I, I don't mind Cam Smith. I was going to bring it up. But, I, yeah, I like Cam Smith. Just um, I know a lot of people are betting him. I wonder if at the $9,100 price tag, how many people will actually play him when you have the likes of, like, look, it, it, this is what I always say. It's going to get sp- spaced out no matter what. But that's where it's you. it's fine. It's easier just to get overweight if you just pick your guys. And so, like, you know, you've got who? Scheffler, Decky. Spieth, Zalatoris, Bubba, all these guys below that we're going to get to in a minute that how can these guys, they all can't get 15, 20% ownership. It's just not going to happen. There might be three guys that, that cross 20% this week. I don't think Cam Smith will be one of them. So I'll definitely be in on Smith. I like that he's 9,100 and not 8,500. We know he can win these types of tournaments. He has before. And Aussies have played well here in the past. Leishman, Adam Scott, you mentioned the Kikuya grass that they're used to a little bit more. We've seen it plenty. So I like Cam Smith. I like Scheffler. This is one spot, like I said, I don't know what people are going to do, but I just know what I'm going to do. He's already come 20th and 30th here the last two years. Better golfer now, I think, than then even. And then getting the monkey off his back. We've seen it so many times. You talked about it earlier with Hoagie. We saw it with guys like Ryan Palmer when him and Rom won the Zurich and got the team event under their belt. And Ryan Palmer just had a great season. The all-around game is there. So, again, at 9200 they didn't change his price because the field strength got, went stronger. But he's still in the mix with all these guys. Decky, I like that's really the three Hovland would give me some interest, but you know, I could easily just go to Xander there instead. So the three I like are Decky Scheffler and Smith right at the bottom. Is Kepka the lowest down? Maybe. I, I don't know. He, he kept his right at nine K. So it's tough to say if people want to chase last week or not, but it's tough to say too, because last week is sort of his event, right? That was what I said earlier where, you know, people didn't really take that into consideration. They just said, Oh, it's Brooks. It's a regular season event. And remember that's how we, what I don't get about that. And I was even guilty of it is this last season. We all hit that bet on Brooks. It was like 40 to one. Some had it at 50, like just the stupid number. Nobody cared about recent form. Nobody cared about regular season versus majors. We just said auto bet and he won. And it almost worked this time. I know a lot of people had bet Brooks last week as well. So I bet books. So that was painful, especially since he made four birdies in his last eight holes. Yeah. Uh, to get the 15 under and then that bogey on 10. He was, uh, he was definitely playing to win. He burned some edges yeah. on those off the, off the green chips that he had to make. He was just, go, you had to go for it. But I just, I'm saying, I love to see that out of him. The one thing I really liked about Kepka was, you know, his, his short game wasn't great, but he was grinding out those six to nine footers and just making all of them. That's like major Kepka type guy. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, that, that's what he does at majors. And that's why he's so good. He avoids making those mistakes, even if his chips aren't that good. You notice that a lot uh, in the final round because he was driving it everywhere. Like he, he should be low owned, though. I also wonder if Rory will be low owned, just because you know Rory's sort of in between, right? You either go up to like you asked me the question earlier, uh, DJ or the guys up top, or you kind of drop down to like the Deckies, the Schefflers, the Smiths, or into this 8K range, which we're going to get to in a minute. So Rory and and Kepka both could go overlooked here. Kepka also kind of has the the Morikawa type history, like 38th, 43rd, miscut, like never really done his thing here. And let's not overthink this. Like think of it if you use one of those two guys. Say you use Cantley, you could use Rory, and you could use Kepka in a lineup. Yeah. Cantley, Rory, Kepka to start your three doesn't sound that bad to me. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you're overthinking and look at all these numbers and look at course history and look at all that stuff. But look at those three names right there that you could fit in a lineup. Uh, and still have, you know, around 7K to spend for each rest of your golfers. Yeah, uh, the more I talk about it with you, the more I'm, I'm kind of with you on the guys up top. Like, I really do just want to play Rom and Cantley, Rom or Cantley. And then go 9K and then after that. And yeah. even if I use them in like a majority, like 30% Rom, 30% Cantley, and then I have 40% of lineups to play with, yeah. I could run some balanced lineups. You could you could have like a Hovland, Decky, Brooks. You got the guys with four or five wins that are the last 10 or 12 events mixed with a four-time major champion who showed some shit last week. And now yeah. you've started your lineup with three guys right there and have all kinds of money in a completely different roster construction. So I think I'm going to, I'll probably start 40% Cantley, 35% Rom, and then 25% starting in the 9K range. 
Yeah, I, I think yeah. that I think I think that's how I'm going to build uh, this week. You got to be able well to leave some guys off. That's the key, like you said. You just you, uh, you, you tell a story about JT Morikawa, DJ. You can talk up all these guys. Right. You got to take your stands and make your lineups correctly. So I, I do like that. All right, let's go to the 8K range. Next cash game cornerstone is going to be Will Zal Torres, 15th year last year. A uh, couple of top tens in a row on tour. Uh, maybe it's his time. Everyone's being a first time winner. Maybe it's his. Maybe it's his time here. Uh, this course, you know, he's long enough for this course. Uh, his driving distance is great. Strokes gain off the tee. Like I said, length will help. He's really good on those longer par fours, which is going to be uh, important this week. Tee to green, top ten in the field uh, in the last fifty rounds. Fifteenth uh, year last year. So Willie Z will be my third cash game cornerstone this week. Uh, and then other other ones that I like in this range, I really like the bottom. I like Matthew Fitzpatrick. I talked about it earlier. Um, he's sort of, I don't know if he's been sneaky good, but he's been pretty damn good. A couple of top tens uh, here in the last uh, couple of times out. Uh, I, and, uh, you know, Matt Fitzgerald usually, Fitzgerald usually steps up on more difficult courses. Uh, so I really like Fitz. I really like Gooch. I do not mind Gooch in cash. He's not one of my cash game cornerstones, but I do like him in cash. I like him in GPPs. I like him in all formats. Uh, at that price, uh, he, you know, it's it's only been a few events since he's won. I think it's only been like what eight events, nine events since he's won his last one at the what was it, the RSM or if I'm yeah. not mistaken, right? And then uh, you know, pretty good course history here. Hasn't missed very many cuts. Makes a cut here every year. Uh, the numbers really uh, sort of spell out pretty good for him. And I ha- I have him seventh in my model. Uh, iron game strong, really good, or uh, you know, around the greens, and that's, I think that's going to be important this week. Um, you know, good on those longer par five, par fours, good on par fives. I like his number. I think I got him forty to one. I put that bet in. I also bet Zal Torres thirty five to one. So I went in. I think you can get fifty to one in some books. I use DraftKings Sportsbook because they pay our bills. Oh, but so on on DK, I think he's forty to one is what I saw, and I went in and took that. Took Zal Torres thirty five to one. I like these guys. If you look. Um, no one better than 20 to one has won this event uh, in the last 10 years, 10, 10, 12 years, something like that. No one better, no one, you know, shorter odds than 20 to one. There's been a couple hundred to ones out there that have won this event. Uh, so it's not always the top, top tier guys, but again, it's usually a top tier guy because all of them play this event. That's why the numbers are what they are. Uh, so, so I like those two guys a lot this week. Uh, you know, I, 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 so, so, you know, Gooch and Fitzpatrick, my two favorites. And I'll be playing a lot of guys in this 8K range, too. Yeah, Bubba. Bubba track, don't forget, right? Three-time winner here. It used to be the pattern. He'd win, and then he'd come back and miss a cut or whatever and, and go from there, but or, or not have, have as good of a finish, I should say. But just going back, looking at it, like he's in this range. I think he'll be popular. So for me, the Zalatoris thing, I can't bet that guy at that number. I talked so much shit about him that week, and then he had to withdraw anyway. But I, lo- I like him in DK. Uh, I think like, if you look again, it's kind of like this week, Scheffler, not just for the comparison of getting his you know, chance to get his first win guys winning at numbers like that, like 30 to one 35 to one for him here. But if you just look at the number at 8,800, there's easily ways he can get into your lineup as the third, maybe even your fourth guy. If you go that nine K route that I talked about. So, and, and drop down there. So I think it's a, a good play from that perspective. 15th was last year. And it's the only real time that he played here before that he played it back in 2015 and miss cuts. So who really cares about that? A couple other guys though, that stand out like Burns coming in off two missed cuts, but third here last year, solid in the stats. We know he has the upside. So I like Burns. Uh, Sung Jay, I think is interesting. The only odd thing about Sung Jay. So he hits on everything else that I'm looking at, but if you go back and look, even his form is solid, but you know, sixth, 11th, miss cut eighth, but uh, last year, the Honda, right. You know, the, or sorry, you know, coming up before the Honda where he's won in the past. I think you're looking at it from that perspective. It's just sort of this time of year, this type of course, he sets up well, so at 8,600, could be a Bubba pivot. And then I was trying to look for some more down here. The three at the bottom, two you mentioned, Fitzpatrick, you gave the same line that I had. I mean, I thought the same thing. You said we've been watching him at these courses. I know he had a hole-in-one in the practice round leading up to the waste management and then said, I wasted it, which is true. Other guys made up for it with Sam Ryder and Carlos Ortiz, but still came out and finished 10th. Fifth here last year at this course, sixth at Pebble, just passed a couple of weeks ago. I mean, he's been playing good, and now we get the harder setup. I like that. Gooch completely lost it on Sunday, but beyond that, he's been incredible. And then 12th, 10th, 20th, his last three visits. So I think at this spot, so I like going back to him. And then the last guy, I'm going to stick with the Aussies this week. Uh, I got another one coming up in a minute, but just going here at 8,200, Adam Scott, former winner, 
great course history. Couple, sort of the Cam Smith route of the overseas or the sneaky top tens that no one's following. Two in his last three events. And then he just played the waste management. Didn't have a good finish, 38th, but made the cut, did whatever, sort of sk- skated through. And now you get him back to a course that he's definitely very comfortable with. So I like Scott, Fitzpatrick, and Gooch down at the bottom. All right, let's get to the 7K range. My final cash game cornerstone is going to be Paul Casey. I think he's made like every cut here in the last eight attempts or something like that. He's been playing pretty decent across the pond, a couple of top 25s. Uh, the form is is not bad. And at $7,600, I, I, I like using him in cash. Uh, this week, I expect him probably to be popular. I don't know. I'm not an ownership guru, so I'm not 100% sure. But so my cash game cornerstones for this week, they are going to be, and if you look at his numbers, again, uh, really good on par fives, really good on 150 to 175. You're going to see a lot of that. He's long enough off the tee, tee to green, he's strong, lots of birdies, approach game strong. Uh, it's just the numbers line up too. So cash game cornerstones this week are going to be Xander at 9,900, Hideki at 93. Willie Z at 88, Casey at 76. Now, not only is 14-4, a little bit less than what I normally do uh, for my cash, uh, for my cash cornerstones. But like Tambo said, there's a lot of 6K guys that I like. And I'm going up to 8K for my fifth golfer. I told you who it is. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's going to be, there's going to be a $6,400 punt that, I, that I'm going to play. I didn't use them in my cash game cornerstones just because I can fit the other guys in there. Uh, but I mean, you could still go ahead and do, um, you know, five guys, 7,600 or above, and then one punt. Uh, and, and that's basically how I'm going to go about it today with my one sixty four hundred dollars play. Again, another Aussie, talking about the Aussies, when it comes to GPT, I like Leishman uh, up top. He's been playing really, really well. Uh, you could see it in his game. It's, it's a, a stark improvement from what he was last year, where he was sort of struggling going up and down. You could still more steady game, uh, more solid, bunch more top 10s, bunch more top 25s. Uh, so I like Leishman a lot in the upper 7K range. Who do you like in the upper 7K range? Too? He was the other guy I was going to say. Yeah, I know uh, people have bet him. I'm, I definitely bet him. I got a pretty good number on him. First thing this morning, just a guy I thought of, right? It makes sense for the course. He has a, a decent history here. Uh, just go back and look at course fit, everything that goes with him. So he makes sense to me. Uh, Russell Henley, this guy, just nothing really stands out too much. Kind of disappointed a little bit for, for some last week at 8,200. But the numbers don't lie, and they've been pretty solid for the last little while now. So if people want to go away from him, I think he's the other one that's interesting there. The other thing is, I like what you said about Casey. I think he's a really good cash play because he doesn't miss any cuts. He gets you that number. But if you look from, not that you need all the upside in the world from your $7,600 guy, but they're all just pure middling finishes, like 35th, 49th, 36th, 29th. Like his recent form is even the same way. It's like 24th, 16th, 12th. Like, those will all come in handy. So I like using them, but I, if he gets popular, I love, like you said, just you do it all the time. Use them in cash for yourself. Go off in tournaments, play some of these guys around. And the other guy I wanted to ask you about, I'll take us down into this lower 7K range and go through it, but get your thoughts first. Seamus Power. So he pops all across the board. No course history here. That's the one thing. I know he missed the cut last week, but different style environment than what we've seen him play. And obviously Phoenix is a different beast in itself, but you go back here, um, I think he played this in, uh, what has he got? 2019. I'm trying to look off two pages then. It's killing me. Yeah, 64th, but a much different golfer now, right? I said at first he didn't play it. I meant he didn't play it well. 64th, but a different golfer now. Four top 15s before the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Does have a complete game, but someone brought up a good point to me today, Kenny, and I want to get your opinion on this because he really has popped heavily, but it's in birdie fests, right? Like he's always there in the mix, of, you know, crushing. Even when he won was the Barbasol. They're not these strength of fields. And they're not really this, I mean, this tournament can get to 18 under. I get it. I'm just saying it's not how you would think that it gets there. It's usually set up based on weather, like you mentioned, or the the fact that the field is so strong. Is he really going to pop here again at 7,500? So what are your thoughts on Seamus Power? And then you can go through the seven, the bottom 7K range if you want. Well, in his run in his last six events where he's going to his fourth, 15th, third, 14th, ninth MC, the miscut came in Phoenix, which played a lot more difficult than than, than the other courses that he's played. Uh, Phoenix played way, way more difficult than Pebble, the Amex, Sony, uh, Tournament and Champions. RSM, maybe it was a little, maybe it was close. I don't remember the RSM that well. That, 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 that course can't play too hard uh, yeah, sometimes, that, that, depending on the I think that was the one Gooch won, though, right? At like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, so I mean, maybe. And then the Houston Open was pretty difficult, if I remember last year, too. He missed the cut there. Uh, so I, I, you could be right about that. I mean, the thing is, he doesn't get into fields like this that often. Uh, I guess the best field that he's been in uh, in the last year, it was probably the Northern Trust uh, finished 31st, which is respectable. Uh, and then and before that was probably the Wells Fargo, 
where he finished 54th. Uh, and then you look, you know, Farmers missed a cut uh, last year. So I don't know. It depends on how you think about it. I don't know if I'm going to go with him when it comes to, where is he, like 75? He's 75. Um, that's what I'm saying. So if you look at the, the Fantasy National stuff, he's going to pop heavily. If you yeah. look at the fact of the price, like the 7,500 lines up with how well he's done and whatnot, but it's just one of those things where strength of field is completely different as well. This is a very strong field, and I don't know if it's the type of course set up for him, but he should be popular at 7,500. What about Kokrak? I mean, the guy's has, what, three wins, right, in, in the last year, year and a half, something like that, if I, or two or three wins. Uh, you, you see him at 70 to one on DraftKings Sportsbook. I know his stats don't really line up. Uh, his course history doesn't line up, but 71 for a guy that has been winning so much. What do you think of that? Yeah, that's a good point. And actually the other thing about it is he's a cut maker, right? He, he makes a lot of cuts. And even if you go back here, his course history doesn't you know blow you away, but one missed cut in the last six years. And then it's kind of like Paul Casey, 32nd, 37th, 20th, 22nd, second. I think he's a great tournament play here if he's not going to be very popular because it's just a spot where, like you said, people will be on Casey. We didn't talk about all the guys, but like Neiman, Garcia's there. Hoagie has been crushing it lately and had another good week. Power, who I just brought up. And then we're getting into this range, but don't forget what's coming up. Thomas Peters, Luke List, the Gala. Like you, you got all these guys that people are going to want to move to as well. So I, I like the Kokrak call. I think he could be an interesting tournament player. I mean, I'm intrigued with Kokrak. I don't know whether I'm going to bet him or if I'm going to play him in DK. I guess DK will probably be safer. Uh, but I mean, I, yeah, I'm not sure. All right, before we get down to the seven carry, I do want to talk about one more thing I forgot to mention about my cash game cornerstones. Uh, I am using the Augusta narrative when it comes to that. So if you look back, Xander's finished second um, at, uh, at, at, at Augusta. And the stat that I told earlier in the program, 18 of the last 31 winners here have finished first or second at the Masters. So Xander's finished second here once. Uh, Hideki has won. Uh, Zalatoris has finished second here. And then Casey has finished fourth. Uh, at, at Augusta. So I'm using that, that Augusta narrative when it comes down to it. It's something that maybe you could think of when you make your lineups this week as well. Uh, let's move to this bottom 7K range. Uh, I mean, what, what, what do we do with Patrick Reed? 90 to 1. I felt like I had to bet him, right? I bet uh, him. He's one. on my yeah, card yeah. too. Nine, yeah. 90 to 1. 90 to 1. You have to bet him. Uh, now, do you play him in DK though? I'm not. He's been playing. He's been playing like garbage. Yeah, uh, I think. Yeah. It, I think it's just based on the number that I liked it from a betting yeah, perspective. Sort of when I had, saw the list. That's another thing about Kokrak. Kokrak, the seventy to one number. I was like, yeah, this guy, he can win. He's a proven winner, and you're getting him at seventy to one, which I think is a great number. But I don't think I'm going to use him in DraftKings. So that's the difference between DraftKings and and, and betting, right? I mean, it's all well, about the, other the thing win. Too is in DraftKings, it's all it's about the sacrifice. win. Yeah, yeah. You, you talk about it all the time, but like you sacrifice so much more if he tanks your lineup then you know you're done on a chance at three hundred thousand, maybe with your yeah. five and a six in a 20 dollar tournament yeah all you love on the betting side you're 20 bucks to pay 1800 at the 90 to one so it's like yeah. you know you, you can do it set it up that way i just think that's one other way to look at it so i'm contemplating adding coke Greg. i have five bets so far so i got room for one more so i'm thinking about it uh but i yeah so i mean down here i i like uh I like trigali uh another guy who's been uh, in the mix again, who decides who makes every cut here all the time uh, at $7,300. It's cheap. You can go ahead and throw them in there. I like Tringali a lot. Uh, I like, I like Lanto. Lanto's been playing pretty damn good golf. Uh, you're not getting the 6K Lanto anymore that Rick Gaiman loves. That's just not happening anymore. Not even in these fields. Um, you're not getting it. Uh, and he's had a, a, a few nice finishes in a row, back to back to back. So, uh, maybe I think one miscut maybe in between. Uh, so I like Lanto down here. Bazadenhut, another guy who around the green and putting is extremely strong. Uh, and he's also really, really good from 150 to 175. He's going to have to be good with his longer irons uh, because he is one of the shortest drivers out there. Uh, so the driving worries me a little bit with him, but I think I'm still going to, I think he's still used to it because you know, how good he is around the greens. Um, and Molinari, Hadwin, I love this bottom 7K range. That's why I think you go, you know, Cantley, Rory, um, Kepka, Cantley, Rory, Decky, and then just go this, this low 7K because Molinari has become a California kid. The guy loves playing Cali. It's a shizzle now. I think he finished top 10 here last year. I think all of his top finishes the last year plus have been in California. Uh, so I'm going to play Molinari and Hadwin. Really good last week. Really good 
course history here. I almost used him in cash if I had adjusted some of my other guys. Uh, but yeah, I like having a lot of these lower 7K guys. I like a lot. Who do you like? Yeah, it's pretty loaded range. And like I said, I think there's plenty of guys to get different with. You mentioned going back to the well on Tringali. I like that. Uh, Luke List is there at 7,400. He's playing well. Two two weeks ago, he won, right? So uh, this past weekend, not as good. He gained on it. Went back to old Luke List. Gained on approach, lost big with the putter. Maybe he can find something again, but I just think talent and upside, we know that. And from a tee to green perspective, one of the best in the field. Thomas Peters, got to wait and see. I, I loved him coming in, doing this thing overseas. Most don't follow him or know the name as well. We know the talent and upside that he has. We've seen him come into majors and play very well. And people are like, oh, who's this, right? And so got to wait and see. I don't want to play like a very chalky, Thomas Peters, because it's trendy and there is so many guys down here you could use instead. We'll see who becomes this week's Aaron Wise. That was to me crazy. I'll talk about him later because we now can find him down at 6,700. But a couple other guys that stood out. So another Cali kid, McNeely, miscut the one time he played here, but he's been stringing together top 30s. Bazudenhout, you mentioned Lanto there. I, th I think it's a good course for Bazudenhout at the same price. We were waiting on this guy, but you want a little bit of a tougher track. You want somebody that can putt and a strong around the green game. That's what he's got. He's actually uh, been doing his thing still. If you look, 14th, 46th, 40th, 17th, and 6th, he's got some good results at his last tournaments. He just, and now he's down at 7,200. Uh, another guy right at 7,000 that made me think of him, but EVR. We always say the same. What do we always say about Van Royen? And this is a guy that won on tour last year, the year before that. I can't remember now, but just thinking about out loud, we want him to be cheap. 7K is cheap. We want him in these stronger, shorter fields, like a WGC or a major. Check. And is anyone really going to be on him? Probably not. So I think if you go look at him and from a, a stats perspective, the upside, I'll play some EVR down here at the bottom. And then a couple more. Uh, Mc, McNe or, uh, not McNeely, sorry, Mackenzie Hughes. We tell the story all the time. Speaking of Honda next week, but you were standing there with his mom watching that final approach shot on a very tough track at the Honda. And now we get back to the situation where, again, it's a little bit tougher. It's a stronger field. Uh, he showed up at that same RSM where Gooch won. So maybe that makes some sense. You know, you brought, we brought that up earlier. Mind you, Seamus Power showed up in that as well. So something to think about there. And then lastly, speaking about showing up at the same places, who just won the tournament? Speaking of Saudi and everything going on with that, with the Bryson news, we'll see what happens with him. But uh, the Saudi, Har Harold Varner, got the job done. Who did he take it from? Bubba, whose track is this? Bubba's. HV3 disappointed everybody last week, but he was coming off of a W, man. Million dollar check. I think it's time to get back on board with some HV3. Again, so many guys you can play down here in this bottom 7K range, but that opens up the question, Kenny, what do we do in this 6K range? Because we just named like 10 dudes down I there. I don't have a lot in the 6K range, but I'll let you open it up first. The one guy I didn't miss, Bobby Mack at 7,100, coming off a of ninth and 13th place across the pond, coming yep. here, lefty. We've seen lefty succeed at this course. Uh, you know, you Bubba won't, won't pop times, in any right? models either. So we're gonna no, love him. No ownership. Yeah, yeah. No Don't ownership. Even know. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I like Bobby Mack a lot down here too for 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 a GPP play. Uh, there's definitely some guys I do like in this in this 6K range. Um, you know, Pat Kazire has been playing some pretty good golf. He's been really good on those longer par fours here recently. Um, he actually pops eighth in my model in the last 12 rounds. I know it's a short, smaller sample size, but he's been playing pretty good golf. Uh, Munoz, another guy uh, who's really, really strong uh, from with his longer irons and his and longer par fours. I like, you know, when he gets hot, like he did on what so on Sunday, I think he was like six hundred or something like that to finish it, to finish uh, his tournament. I like Munoz a lot. Uh, you go down a little bit more. JJ Spawn has been playing pretty good golf. He hasn't has the best history here, uh, but you know, I think he's made nine of his last ten cuts on tour. Uh, he's could be viable for that last punt play that I'm playing with because the one I have right now in my lineup, which could change is Taylor Pendrith, who I think can really take this course down with his length off the tee, shorter irons coming in uh, than the rest of the rest of the field. The guy's really long. Uh, I like your Canadian brethren a lot right now. And I haven't posted in my last spot in my cash lineup for now. We'll see. It's going to be him or spawn. Um, you know, you're either going to go no course history or poor course history. Uh, when it comes down to that. Uh, and then, of course, you have Spawn, who's made nine of his last 10 cuts. So I'm still iffy on, on which where I'm going to go. Uh, but, I, you know, there's there's definitely some guys here. that And, and then Han, who hurt me last week, this is another course he plays extremely well on, and he's won here uh, in the past. Uh, so, you know, after his miscut last week, I think his ownership was like 6%, which is 
sort of fairly high for a 6K golfer. Um, you know, I think that'll probably be cut in half, you would think. Uh, and the guy has better form here than he did in Phoenix. Uh, so uh, there are some guys here that I like. Who do you like in this range? Yeah, I like a few. Um, you know, I wanted, I didn't know if you wanted to talk about Ricky or not, but I, I guess I don't think anyone's going to play Ricky, even though the fact that he is 6,600, he sucks. The one thing I will say, uh, even last year, he was kind of sucking around this time, got 20th still here at this course. And if you go back to the waste management just last week, the numbers I did look at uh, first couple rounds, he was actually really solid on approach and around the greens. So that's something you need here. I'm not advocating to play him. I made fun of him today on Twitter, but I just think in general, if nobody's going to go there, because the thing I was going to bring up, the one I want to talk about most, I like Pat and who you mentioned 10th last week, looked really solid from a stats perspective, but Aaron wise and Mito, these guys just pop like crazy in these models. And I did this exercise a couple weeks ago with Ekrot. Not last week when he did okay, but the week before when he missed the cut after the first day, everyone was victory lapping the Monterey Peninsula round that he put up six under, and then he got worse and worse and missed the three-day cut afterwards. So the thing is, all these stats that you're going to see popping, like you go on Aaron Wise here, I pulled it up. Last 50 rounds and then versus last six months. It includes, last 50 rounds includes August to October when he had seven straight top 26 finishes, two of them being top eight finishes. So since November, he's actually only played four times. And the two that were in January and February, actually relevant, were two missed cuts. So everything that you're seeing in those models that have him popping way up your board are going to disappear here in the next month or so because all those rounds go away. And that's the same thing for Mito. Now, Mito did slide in, uh, I think it was the 25th at the Farmers. But if you just look back, it's been all putter for him. Like these two guys are going to pop up in people's stuff and they'll play them. But I think there's lots of guys you can get different with I'm not saying that I love the guys that you're like in there with like James Hahn. I, I get what you're saying about the ownership. I, I don't hate that. I wrote the notes here, obviously former winner, good course history overall, but I was going to bring up a couple other guys completely narrative based Kenny, but not so much for, for at least these two um, Gim and Redmond 2017 us am held here. It was actually awesome. I remember watching it. Redmond beats Gim in the finals. It's match play, of course. And you look at it now, Gim actually played some half decent golf and then Redmond, down here, 25th and 33rd at the Farmers and Pebble, down at 6,300. We know it's an invitational. It's already a smaller field. You can use just, just one of them. Use him and then everything else that you want to fit, and you can do that. And then the other guy, Bo Hostler, showed up a couple of weeks ago there. Taylor Pendrith played well. Patrick Rogers. Like, these are sort of the guys I would rather go to here and take my chances to round it out, but not much below them. The Bo Hostler one's interesting just because a couple of weeks ago, man, he looked really good coming out of that at the finish there just didn't end up going his way, but that's how it goes on these Sunday rounds. So those are some of the guys I like down at the bottom. Anybody else you want to talk about? No, let's get the bets. Did you talk about Ricky? Do you have a Ricky comment? I mean, I ain't playing. I'm wearing his shit, but I ain't playing him. All right. You maybe, uh, I think now you're wearing Bryson shit. It's been a Bryson. takeover. It's been a takeover. I don't know. Probably Ricky probably pulls more merch than Bryson. I can tell you <laughs> I think that. he does. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's get to these bets. Um, I'm going to start off with Hovland at 25 to one um, just that number seemed okay to me for a guy who, you know, who do we know can win? Uh, you know, and, and, and you can get more cow at 20 to one also. So I was de debating on both of those. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to go both, but I was going to go one. I decided to take the, the couple more points and go Hovland uh, 25 to one. Um, and then I'm going to go. Um, uh, is that 35 to one? I'm sorry. I got him at 28 to one. He was 35 this morning. I didn't get, get that. I work in DC. Uh, so when I saw the number, uh, I couldn't bet it because you can't use DraftKings Sportsbook in DC. You can only use DC Sportsbook, which is the worst sportsbook known to man. Uh, so it really sucks. So uh, I got, I, I had to wait till I got home and his number jumped down, but I, I'm still going to bet him 28 to one. Uh, Gooch, 40 to one. Um, Leishman, 50 to one. And Patrick Creed, 90 to one. It's five bets. I'll probably bet one more. Uh, we'll see in my final betting card. Who are you going with? Yeah, I got six guys right now. I got uh, DJ, 18 to one. Like I said, just talk about the history. It doesn't really matter seemingly for him. So I like the fact that he was almost at 20 to one. I'll, I'll roll with him. Fitzpatrick got 45 to one. I know some others don't have that number, but I like that quite a bit. Talked about him earlier and just how he's been playing so well at even these other courses that we usually would say don't fit him as well. And now he's coming to a course where I think you could easily see him come from behind to win on Sunday. So I like that. Bubba, 45 to one, sort of a FOMO bet there. So I've got him on the card. Leishman, I saw a lot of people bet him. I got him first thing at 75 to one. I bet Peters at 75 to one. I kind of hate the number, but I bet it. So uh, it's too late now. And then Reed, 
at 90 to one. I, I bet him for sure at that number. So that's my six guys. Yeah, I'm contemplating Coke Rack, maybe even Homa uh, as, as the next one. I mean, at Homa right now, where is he? So hard to win back to back, man. Yeah, I know, but I mean, like, yeah, fifty to one still isn't great. I don't know if I, I'd rather. I think I'd rather go Kokrak at seventy to one uh, that I have right now on DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, so that that's probably what I'm looking at right now. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, and we'll see who we go with. Maybe Hadwin at 131 just get two more bets, and you know what I'm saying uh, with the money I have left. Because like I said, I'm uh, instead of betting a hundred dollars total uh, and using four hundred dollars in in um or five hundred dollars in DraftKings. I'm now betting $200 a week and $400 on DraftKings. So uh, that's the way I'm going about my strategy when it comes to betting in DFS for the total bankroll of the week. Uh, just because I, I, I just think it's easier to hit those winners. Uh, you know, and it's never easy. Don't get me wrong. No, but it's uh, like yeah. you said a little bit earlier too. It either happens or it doesn't versus in your lineup. You can have the six to six, think you're well on your way. Someone posts a hole in one and an eagle down the stretch. <clears throat> Carlos Ortiz and next thing you know you're dead in fourth place and if you look at the structures too I always complain about them I don't care but you look at this week the $20 has 300k up top on DraftKings it's like I, I want to say 5,000 bucks or something for like you you miss by like six spots again obviously winning's winning and that's what it's all about but they do have a really cool $3 20 max this week where they opened it up and it's 10% of first the 150k pool to first for 15,000 and then it's 1500 to ninth and 10th place, which is 10% of the first place prize. That's something I've always talked about. I know uh, Al Smizzle, other guys out there have mentioned it in the past. I would love to see that structure, regardless of what the number is for even these bigger tournaments. It'd be a lot of fun. Okay. I'm adding two more bets right now, live on the pod. I'm going to go bombs. Uh, I'm going to go Adam Hadwin, 130 to one and Molinari, 150 to one. Uh, so those, those are going to be my got five, you know, not so bomby, I guess 90 to one would be a bomb for the, for, for Reed, but I, I'm putting in the bets right now for Molinari and Hadwin. Uh, so we'll see how, how that works off. And it still gives me like $6 to play with. Uh, so I might throw another bomb in there here later when it comes down to it. All right. One and done. I'm going Cantley. Yeah. I'm using, a, I think I'll either use a big dog, Rom X or Cantley, or I'll go down to uh, Willie Z and get a little hedge life in case he somehow does pull off the Scotty Scheffler and get the first win. Cause just talk so much shit about him. And I tried to do that with him a couple of weeks ago and it didn't work because he had to withdraw. And so I couldn't use him. obviously a one and done. So I, I might use him this week instead because use them up and be done with them. Don't have to talk about them anymore. All right. You can find me on Twitter at Kendo VT. You can find my article on gups corner, gups It'll be out here later uh, this evening. You use promo code Kenny, uh, save yourself 30% off a sub seven day risk fee trial. Check it out. It's got all the tools, the green machine, Pretty cool uh, lineup generator. Uh, Gup's ownership, really, really nice. It's got all that stuff. It's got my stuff that comes out on on Mondays and Wednesdays as well. Tambo. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Toe Tag and Tambo. Hit me up there if you guys have any questions. Add me if you need anything. Go there for uh, all my other stuff. Content runpuresports.com. You can use promo code DGEN50, D E G E N 50. Get yourself 50% off your first month. Check that out. we got a lot going on now that NFL is wrapped up. I'm doing all my PGA content over there. Wednesday is a premium show, so you have to join up to check it out. But you get all the other sports. It's all sports, one price. Hop in the Discord and give it a try. All right. So it's it, this, this next few weeks are going to be fun. It, it's true. Golf is here. Football's over. It's all golf all the time. We got the big events. We got the players. We got the masters. We got everything coming up. Let's win some motherfucking money. DJ Nation. Getting dirty money, Jordan Bill Fur. Stacking penny stocks while I'm flipping these birds. Sipping on Ciroc, trip them up with the words. I done popped the molly.